have tough titties. <laughs> All right. Tough titties. That sucks. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to another Ink and Paint Club movie review. Movies review. You should oh, say. No, we're just doing one tonight. I don't have time for two. We're not going to do two. I, I mean, if you want to, I guess. It's basically the same story. Basically. <laughs> it literally is the same story. All right, well, anyway. Um, hi, welcome to the Ink and Paint Club. We're... We review movies here. I'm JD. Over there's Kyle. I'm in California. Yes, we made that joke last time. Oh. Um, and this week we're going to be talking about, I guess, both Hotel Transylvania movies. Let's do both. All Did right. you watch both recently? Because I watched both recently. I haven't watched either of them in a while, but I remember enough about them to talk about them. So That's really I'm good. stupid. Oh, but now I gotta change the title cards. I already made them, and they're all just from the first movie. Yeah. So whatever. Fuck me, I guess. Just, so. I don't know how you would change it. Just. I don't know. Whatever. I'll f I'll change it later. <laughs> Edit this shit in the morning. <laughs> Let's do so it in one take. Oh boy. All right. So anyway, um, Hotel Transylvania is a movie from Sony Pictures Animation, who has been stepping into the animation game in the last couple of years and to varying degrees of result. I can't even think of... Well, they did Storks, right? No, that was Warner Brothers. Shit, I don't even fucking know at this point. It's all Disney to me now. <laughs> become that adult now. <laughs> You're that new part of the problem. Yeah. Um. No, but the... Uh, I guess we'll talk about the first one and we'll get into the uh, second one later. Um... But the first movie came out in 2012 uh, and, you know, stars the ensemble cast of Je of usual Adam Sandler actors. So if you've ever seen an Adam Sandler movie in the past, like, years. So so basically, if you've seen there. Grown Up, if you've seen Grown Ups or Pixels, you know everybody in this movie. That's um, a good way of putting it. So you've got your Kevin Jameses and your Steve Buscemi's and your... David Spades. Yeah. And CeeLo Green. <laughs> I know. Well, like, that's the weirdest fucking decision. <laughs> well, I'm, I, they replaced him in the second movie, but... um. And it sounded so weird in the second movie, because I watched <laughs> right. him right afterwards. Right. Oh, uh, that was weird. So, Kyle, you just... Was this your first time watching these movies? No, I saw them on, like, a low cam rip when they first came out so it okay. wasn't like it wasn't that great of quality but seeing it in better quality i guess you can appreciate it a bit more i love how casual you are with your blatant use of piracy like i'm gonna fucking pay for these movies <laughs> uh sony i want to just say up front that i do not uh condone kyle's actions and he does not speak for all of us come at me bro sony uh, so Kyle, why don't you tell us what uh, this movie's all about? Basically, the movie is Dracula lies to his daughter because it's her birthday and she wants to visit the human world because her mom died and her dad wanted to make a safe haven for monsters everywhere, so he built a hotel and she's never experienced the human world in her thousand, was it a thousand years? Something like that. I think she's like 1,018, 118, something. Yeah, One something of those. Like so yeah. she hasn't experienced human life in in that long, and she wants to, and then a human comes by. And Andy Samberg. Yeah, the worst part of the movie. Oh. But anyways, he comes by, <laughs> he's a human, Dracula lies to his daughter and says humans are bad, and then he dresses him up as a monster, and then... Hilarity ensues, and then, blech. I don't even feel like <laughs> hilarity ensues. That should yeah. be the tag. That should be the tagline of our podcast. That's basically what it was. That's what Fred Raider <laughs> told me. There's like oh, you can't God. write episodes where it's like, and then hilarity ensues. It's like, no isn't that how Fairly Odd Parents is? Like, that's the yeah. script. They just write hilarity <laughs> ensues, and that's all that happens. Uh. 
Jesus. Well, uh, I will say that I... We, we should start structuring these whatever, but... um, I don't feel like we have to go that deep into the story, because it seems no. like we do the whole thing as the story. I think you I just know. gotta water it down. To well, like... no. What I was, I was gonna say is that, like, um, I like this movie because um, it does a good job... Um, it is a decent movie for being Gendy Tartakovsky's first directorial feature film. Yeah, I mean, you gotta commend the guy for... Because his, his 3D animation directing does look mm-hmm. like a good cartoon. If it's well, one thing to take from it, it really does look good. Yeah, um, I mean, God bless him because, like, if I understand this right, he was like the third person to come in and try to fix this movie. Shit. Um, and they like basically overhauled everything when he came in. Like I think they re- reworked the script and like everything when he came in. Is that why the art style is all super different? That's what I'm guessing. Um, cause yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um, cause much like how the Book of Life like really reflects like Jorge Gutierrez's art style. Like this movie very much is like Gendy's art style. Um, like every, everything is very stretchy and exaggerated and everyone has like really cutesy eyes. I think it's way more apparent in the second movie. Um, definitely. But, uh, uh, I remember seeing, I guess the, um, making of stuff or whatever behind the scenes and he had like a what was it he was like drawing on top of screenshots showing like to push the action a bit more i thought that was kind of cool yeah it's that's the thing that i think gets lost with a lot of 3d animation is that like they forget that you they're that you're working with cartoon characters and i guess and i get that you're working with like a finite model but like I feel like, especially with Disney um, nowadays and Disney and Pixar, it's like they're so holden to like their characters and worlds, like realistic movements. Whereas like this and the next, these, these two movies, like the characters operate, you know, how cartoon characters work. So like they're, they've got like kind of the rubber hose kind of limb movement and everything's like really fast paced and, um, I don't know. I feel it's refreshing. <laughs> I feel that it's like Disney goes for the SpongeBob approach, where everything has to be on model and they're oh, afraid to, to break model. Exactly. But this one, this one, it's very bouncy. Very, it's very fun to watch. It's just, it really is bogged down because it's a Sandler movie, and it's just, it has his style of writing, which sucks. It mm. has his style of acting, which sucks. And it's like, I, it's a thing that weighs, it's, it's, uh, like the scale on one side, it's good. On one side, it's fucking terrible. Right. And I will, I will say in his defense that I don't think that Sandler and his, uh, his horde of buddies are as bad as they usually are because they've got someone reining them in. It's not Adam Sandler directing his friends. Like, well, from what I read, the second movie, uh, he said that it was very difficult to work with Sandler, and he had more creative control on it. And I did notice, because I've been watching, um, I, I did show you those guys, but Red Litter Media, they do, like, reviews and stuff. They mm-hmm. were doing uh, Sandler movies. Oh, boy. And they were saying, like, Jack and Jill, um, Paul Blart, all this stuff. Well... One of the things that is really blatant in Sandler movies is product placement. And it oh, fucking man. pissed me off that they actually had product placement in Hotel Transylvania too. Wasn't well, it just Sony products though? Yes, but still it's like that it's a bit annoying. They're like, Hey, look at this thing on my computer. This computer's a Vio. Have you heard of this? Or here, I got you a cell phone. It's called well, a Sony Ericsson. Kyle, I, That's I, a bit annoying. Kyle, I, I can tell you right now, that happens in every Sony movie. 
Well, it's not just that's... it's not just this one. It happens in all of their movies. Well, they were they were showing like there's blatant product placement. Like here's a bunch of Coke products. Here's a bunch oh, yeah. of Oreo products. Right. So I don't know if it's just Sandler or Sony, but no, it's it's, Sony. it's very. I'm pretty sure. Sh- I'm pretty sure it was all Sony. The uh, only doing... thing Sony does good is games, and that's not that. I honestly kind of forget that Sony is not a game, a primarily a game company most of the time. Yeah, it's like with Microsoft. It's like, oh yeah, they do make Windows, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's what they were known for. I know, but, but uh, uh, I mean, that's kind of what pissed me off in the first movie, though. Like, within the first nine minutes, there's, like, a poop, fart, piss joke. Like, all this stuff. It's very sand. That's why I'm like, it's very Sandler. <laughs> I was watching uh, Cinema Sins the other day, and they were reviewing um, the first Shrek movie, and they pretty much said the same thing. <laughs> it's like, we're three minutes in, we've already had a, foop, a foop, uh, poop and a fart joke. <laughs> it is true, because he, he farts in the pond, and then it yeah. says, it says Cameron Diaz. And I would hate to have my name <laughs> attributed with farts and Mike Meyer. Right. Um, so but yeah. anyways, uh, for it, it's a it's an okay movie. I just feel like the cast and everything just fucking ruins it. And then seeing the art book from what it looked like, the art is like. <laughs> From what the art book looked like, it was all super Japanese-inspired art, and I was really excited to see that. Like, you remember that, right? Yeah, you said it to me a while back. They were showing Dracula, and he didn't look like Adam Sandler in a costume. It was just like, it looked like a fucking Castlevania boss. Basically. <laughs> Yeah, um, all the art looked super cool, and then it's like, oh, this is what we got. Well, well, well okay, I will then. say that, like, this is pretty early in Sony Animation's, like, you know, foray into feature films, so I'm sure they were still getting their feet wet with, uh, you know, how to interpret, it, you know, concept art in a 3D, which I think they fixed a lot of with the second one. Um, I guess that's true. Um, and one thing, one thing I don't like too is they like to repeat the same joke, and it yeah, it it got transferred into the second movie as well. It wasn't funny funny the first time, but that's kind of a Sandler thing to repeat your one your one okay joke. You repeat it multiple times. Yeah, a lot of a lot of things do like Fairly Odd Parents has that problem, and I was watching a video on a. <laughs> the new Ghostbusters, and they said that they have the same problem where they just repeat a bunch of different jokes uh, over and over again. Yeah, I mean, and I even did. I even true. kind of enjoyed Ghostbusters, but that's not what we're talking about tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not bring that up. Cause Let's not get. Into we're gonna that. have Let's... scheduling issues over that. Oh God. <laughs> um, I will say that, like, um, I I kind of like their Gendy's interpretation of like these classic like universal monsters um like That's... i like <laughs> i like that the, the 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 werewolves are like fucking like beaten down parents just like don't give a fuck anymore <laughs> yeah um i i do have a soft spot for macabre stuff is yeah that the, is that the way to pronounce it i, I thought it was, i thought i thought it was macabre but i don't know Oh, well, whatever. I, I have, don't know. I have a very soft spot for that kind of shit. I like monsters and whatever. Haunted Mansion at Disneyland's like one of my favorite thing because it's very ghosty and whatever. So I like the idea. It's just the execution is kind of off. Yeah. One thing that bothered me from the first and second movie, they have a part where the werewolf... It's it's just kind of written for the joke, I guess. But when you make when you make your own universe and make your own rules and stuff, it bothers me when you don't follow them. Like what so, like how? So so in the first movie they're they're trying to get because the human I don't even remember his name and I just watched the fucking movie. That's a Johnny. Best. There you go. There you go. 
That's how invested I was in there. Well, anyways, <laughs> when he was leaving to go to the airport and everything, they were using, like, a stagecoach to get there, and uh, there was, like, a bunch of sheep in the way. Um, mm -hmm. On a big mountain trail, there was a bunch of sheep. They're like, well, how are we going to do this? And then the werewolf goes out and eats it. Okay. When the second movie, they're trying to show the kid how to, like, be a vampire, be a bad guy. Oh. You know? Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. And then they're like, hey, there's a deal. Or there's a deer. Why don't you go kill him, you know, for the werewolf? Show him how to kill something. He's like, I haven't done this in years. It's like you just fucking did well, it. Well, I actually, <laughs> I, I was read, I was reading up on these just so I could like jog my memory. And I guess the second one, and they don't really do a good job of it of explaining it, but I think the second one takes place like seven years after the first one. Well, I want to say it takes at least three because the kid is kind of a toddler at that point. He's not really seven years old. Wikipedia says that this. Yeah, it says Hotel Transylvania 2, which takes place seven years after the first one. Uh, that bothers me because you have the wolf pups, and they're still pups. They haven't aged at all. Nobody's aged. Yeah, that's why, that's why I'm saying I think, it, I think it's por explained poorly because it's like literally nobody looks any older. And I think that's what kind of bothers me is like I get that like Mavis doesn't age the same yeah. way because she's a fucking vampire but like Johnny doesn't look any older and he's got like a five year old son yeah and he I don't know they should have changed his model a little bit maybe gave him facial hair maybe make him look a little different like yeah but he he still looks like he's 22 or whatever yeah or however old he is so that was one of my problems with that but yeah they they make rules and then they stop doing it because I think in the first one, they were talking about how Dracula doesn't drink blood anymore, mm -hmm. and and he he only does like a vegan option or or an organic or something like that, where he only uh, he only does like rat blood or something dumb like that. I I don't you remember that, right? Yeah, something like that. When the second one, there he's trying to get his little trying to think is it, would it be grandson yeah would it be grandson yeah 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 because it's his daughter's kid family stuff really stumps me okay All right. anyways uh he's trying to get his grandson to like drink blood oh i don't know it's something weird where it's like they bring it up but then they're like no we don't do that and then it's like hey we we gotta have you do this but the whole first movie is about him lying about how humans are bad. And then the second movie, he's lying about, like, not doing the trials with his kid. So yeah. both of them, both the movies, he's lying to his daughter. Yeah. And I do kind of, like, I, like, it kind of bugs me in, um, in, in movies where that's like the main central point where it's like one character is lying to another character for the entirety of the of the thing and then at the end they get found out and everyone gets mad but everyone makes up in the end blah 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 and I'm like alright we've seen other... that we've seen that plot that's true it's a very big trope my other problem with it in the second movie they're at that day camp for vampires whatever and they're like oh it's very pussified now and it's changed <laughs> whatever isn't it like Dana Carvey is doing like the yeah, I the, think so. The camp counselor. Yeah. He does he does this like thing and he goes, Well, it doesn't work on me, I'm a vampire. And then <laughs> they have a scene where they're at dinner and he freezes time and Mavis is frozen as well. Yeah. And it's Not like say what that. the fuck? Or he does mind tricks or something and it's it's something like that where it's like, Well, why didn't it affect her? Like yeah, now that you you're saying all these stuff and like, man, I've never really thought about it. Well, I'm watching the shit very. I don't want to say analytical, but I'm like, well, why didn't this happen? Well, why didn't this happen? Yeah. I and I felt the second movie, it just pissed me off because it felt like the villain was very shoehorned in, and it was only ten minutes of the movie, and they didn't need a villain in the first just, one. No, the second one. There was no um, villain in the first one. Yeah, well, 
the John Lovett's character was kind of a the antagonist, but oh, that's true. But like I said before the podcast, he was just doing doing his doing his doing his job. Those things where it's like villains that did nothing wrong. They were right. supposed to not have humans, and he saw a human, and he's just doing his job. Yeah, I do agree that in the second one, like it's really shoehorned in, like the whole bad guy and then they have to like have a fight scene at the end but like god bless him mel brooks tries but (laughs) it's like your character has no reason to be in this movie like you could cut that entire thing out um and like you probably wouldn't be missing much i want to say that was like his first acting thing in the longest time maybe since space world's animated oh god i forgot that existed (laughs) It was so bad. <laughs> I know. And I was so excited for that shit, too. Oh, jeez. Fuck um, G4. Was it on G4? Any- I think so. Anyways, fuck G4. Hey, G- G4 had Code Monkeys, and I liked that show. No, Tech TV was way cooler back in the day. And then they changed it to G4 to be cool with the kids. Oh, yeah. Um... But like I was saying earlier, um, kind of moving on to the second film, um, I think it really steps up its animation because you get a lot more of those uh, bits of animation where everyone's like really fluid and really rubbery. Um, a lot of the facial expressions are really exaggerated. Like you can definitely tell um, it, even more so that it's Gendy's art style being translated into 3D. Like... Especially if you, like, watch Dracula's face a lot of the time, like, the weird way that he, like, just his face contorts is, like, very much how Gendy draws faces. Yeah. Um, the animation at the end of the movies were really great, too, and I'm wondering if that was, like, uh, all him. Yeah, yeah. The, for the credits, they make these, like, little 2D animated segments, and I, I love that they let him do that for the end. Let's see here. It was great. Um, so it sh- yeah, and this- it showed the last thing he did was Peabody and Sherman as Albert Einstein. I didn't watch the movies, so I didn't, I didn't know yo. I haven't watched, I haven't watched it either. I should probably. Um. Oh yeah, so I guess in the second one, because CeeLo Green had some uh, controversy, they replaced him with Keegan Michael Key from <laughs> Key and Peele. Well, was he it- did some bad things. Was it the rape thing? The I think allegations. so. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. <laughs> oh god! Um, I will say the second one, like, is this so dumb? But I love that they keep doing this. Um, they got Nick Offerman and Megan Mullally to be Johnny's parents, and I love that. Be- I love that they keep making those two be in things together because they're married in real life, and their their marriage is adorable. <laughs> I heard her voice, and I don't watch the shows that you do because I don't whatever That's, anyways yeah. um i just know i guess her from uh bob's burgers as her sister oh i i first knew about her because my parents watched will and grace back in the 90s or whatever the fuck that was on and she was on that show um but yeah she she is on bob's burgers is he on bob's burgers i don't even fucking know i think he's i think he's been on there once once or twice i don't i'm not really sure um I knew he was on Gravity Falls, and I thought that shit was hilarious. Mm, refresh my memory. He was one of the um, the government agents walking around. Yes. Yes. Because he, he showed up, and I'm like, holy shit, is that Nick Offerman? And I checked, and I was like, holy shit, it is Nick Offerman. He has that very dry voice that he always does. He does. And... I know. He's like he, he's like um, John Benjamin, where he, he, has, he literally has the same voice for everything. Yeah. But um, it's but it's completely different every time because of the the way he he gives it. He was X Cop. Um, was he? Yeah, he did the whole X Cop oh. show. Interesting. But um um oh so something something you were bringing up before, what before we were recording um about the voice direction I don't know if we talked about this on the recording already or not. No, no, um, we didn't. But let's bring okay, that so he, up right now. So, yeah, I, and there was something that I kind of agree with now that, like, no one is really doing a voice. Everyone is pretty much playing themselves 
uh, like Kevin James and Steve Buscemi and all of them, they're not, and like David Spade and all there, they're just talking into a microphone, just reading lines. They're not like, like they're, they're a character, but they're not. And it's, it's I think it's a problem with a lot of like celebrity voice actor, at, vo- voice acting with celebrities. And it, it's like, they, they're not paid to do a voice they're paid to be themselves because they're being banked off that. But at the same time, it's like, I can't divorce these characters from your voice most of the time because of that. Cause you're not like, trying to do some kind of voice. Like the invisible man sounded exactly like how David Spade talks. I don't know why I can accept it in like Emperor's new groove and stuff. Well, cause like in Emperor's new groove, like he was definitely playing a character like, Cusco has a lot of personality to him, so it's like yeah, that's true. But the Invisible Man in the in in this in these movies, like he's just David Spade, yeah, as an Invisible Man. Um, Frankenstein is just Kevin James as Frankenstein. The only uh, time he actually he ha- acts is if he screams fire, and then that's just him <laughs> screaming fire. I will say, I I like laugh so hard. Every time the trailer would come up and they have that bit where he, for the second movie, and he just, he's on fire setting oh, this, like, log cabin on fire. That whole, that whole scene is so beautifully animated because everybody's just... chasing after him and they have, like, their own panic. There's a lot of energy just... in that fucking scene. I, I just, I just love that he's, like, running around in the back room waving his noodle arms and just, <laughs> yeah. like, setting everything on fire. This is, like, the best part of that. I love that shit so much. But it's so beautiful. I want to say Andy Sandberg is the only one attempting a voice, and it's just, like, not even that great. It's just kind of like a surfer, yeah. slacker-type character. Yeah, and I'm maybe it's because I'm not as familiar with Andy Sandberg's like, voice acting, so, like, I can... I he I do agree. He's try, he's trying to do something with it. He's he's definitely trying to play a character, but like, um, Adam Sandler is just doing a funny accent. Um, God, it's, it's Selena Gomez. Yeah, Selena Gomez is I think is the worst offender. She's just like, she's pretty lifeless. <sighs> well, so, she does have it, life to her. She's just not that great. Right, and I mean, it's like I sometimes wonder if Selena Gomez wants to be famous. Cause like sometimes I'll hear her music on the on on the radio and it's like such uninspired music and it's like do you want to be famous or are people making you do this shit? It's it's the corporate machine, man. She doesn't write her own fucking music. I will say. Cause it's like. Oh, go on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I will say, it really annoyed me in the fucking the two movies. She says holy rabies like every single fucking minute and that's so annoying she's just like holy rabies let's do this holy rabies i'm a good skateboarder that's her catchphrase they're trying to make it catch on yeah but do hashtag holy rabies yeah that's true but no um (laughs) what is it i think i think mo brooks even says holy rabies it's like god damn it don't make this a thing it won't be a thing i guess it's just their 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 family catchphrase I guess. What were you gonna say? Um, I don't remember now. <laughs> well, good. Then it wasn't worth it. Oh, but but I I know, I know you've got kind of a thing uh, for. I mean, she's cute. Yeah. The whole rainbow smile thing was was pretty cute. I, I liked that. I liked it a lot. You... Okay, and that whole. Hey, man, she. She's not underage. She's overage. Oh yeah, she's a mom though. She's already been dicked. <laughs> her worth... She's damaged goods to you. Yeah, her worth just like went down. Her stock just <laughs> fucking bankrupted that company. Um, I'd like to state for the record again that uh, Kyle does not speak for all of us. <laughs> so, <laughs> women of our audience, please don't take uh, Kyle's comments into effect uh, when judging me. So. Uh... If you're a single mother, I ain't interested. Get to stepping. <laughs> Kyle, you're so insensitive. I'm sorry. I have strong feelings. All right, know, if I'm going to take you out on a date, I don't want to bring no kids menu with, with that shit, okay? <laughs> oh, Jesus. But, um, 
Yeah, I I like both of these movies. I think they're really kind of uh, inventive, and I like that Gendy is getting his chance to show off what he can do in a feature length uh, setting. I saw that. Uh, what was it? People were talking about the whole emoji movie. I forgot the whole Medusa thing. Oh yeah, they didn't even fucking it, show anything of it. It was just like the logo, and they're like, "Lauren Foss is I, gonna do this." It's like because uh, I don't know how far in development it got. Oh, they fucking destroyed that shit. Yeah, but it's it's weird because like, um, like Lauren was gonna do that for Sony, and then like, Gendy's coming back for a third one, oh, but yeah. I. I guess from what I heard, from what I've heard, and I could be completely wrong, but like, um, Gendy wanted to do Popeye, and they're like, no, something happened with that, so he's not working on Popeye. But it's like, my, from what I've heard, it's like, he, if he comes back and does a third ho- Hotel Transylvania, that he gets to do his own original movie, which I think they have scheduled. Um, something about dreams, so it's, wasn't it? It's, it's, yeah, something like that. Um. I don't know. It's a weird situation. Like, I am all for. I want to. Re- I really want to see what Gendy can come up with original, as an original concept. But um. So whatever gets in there, I guess. <laughs> I'm I'm down to see. It's just kind of sad. Like Popeye looked really good. I I don't know uh, about Medusa, but it's well, we'll never know. I guess I know. But that was the thing too. It was like a. That was like one of his dream projects to be on so it kind of hurts in a mm-hmm. sense where you're like oh shit yeah I remember watching a video I think I think it might have been attached to that teaser trailer or teaser test animation they put on he was just like so passionate he was like I grew up watching and reading Popeye and this is just such a dream for me to work on I'm like oh yeah, I feel bad now it hurts now doubly oh, oh. but um right. I mean I like yeah. I like the movies they're they're okay for mindless entertainment, but when you start looking at them at a, as, I guess, an analytical sense, it kind of, shit starts, like, uh, being seen, like, sore thrones, in a, in a way. I don't really, sure. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, they're, they're, they're cute movies, they're, they're competent, I think it's, it's a, they're fun movies to put on around Halloween. Oh. Um, I mean, I'll probably I'll probably fucking watch Hotel Transylvania too. That's again this Halloween. That's what I was gonna say. Both movies what? end with the dance party. Oh God, that's right. They do have the dance party endings. Yes, and I hate that. So okay, much. Ser- seriously, what? How hard is it for for Hollywood to come up with a proper conclusion to a film? Like, all right, we don't have to end this movie. Dance. I just I think it's a way to sell the soundtrack for a movie. Just like, oh shit, I mean, that it, movie it, it, was that that's that song. Let's buy the soundtrack. It's exactly what it is. I wanna see a movie in like an eighties sitcom where they make the cheesiest fucking joke and then they laugh and then it freeze frames <laughs> and ends. Like I would be absolutely fine with that. That'd be funny. But yeah, well, they don't we'll we'll get on that. They don't know how to fucking end a movie properly. My yeah my thing was I feel the kid thing should have been pushed off maybe to the third movie. I yeah. kind of wanted to see a little bit more development with the couple. Maybe have them have a big fight. No, no. Are they going to divorce or something like that? I don't know. Something with them. Yeah. Maybe take out Adam Sandler and his cast and focus more on them. But... The whole kid thing is very Shrek 3 to me, where it's like, the torch is passed, now we're gonna focus more on yeah, the kids. Yeah, no, no, again, not just saying that, I do kind of agree that I think it would have been interesting to get a movie that's just, like, focusing, because you kind of get some glimpses of the relationship in the these two movies, but it would have been nice to have, like, a whole movie, like, okay, they're married now, and, like, what's it like being married to an immortal vampire? And like you know, what kind of ramifications does that have? Yeah. Um. And then, and then at the end of the movie, you're like, oh hi, by the oh hey, by the way, I'm having a baby. And then the ne- then your next movie starts with the birth of your of your child. Yeah, exactly. But oh. I guess the second movie kind of touched on it, where they're like, hey, we kind of have monsters living in society. Here's someone living with, you know, a monster, and it was like a fish dude. And he's like, yeah. oh yeah, you're gonna love this this community. <laughs> 
I don't know. If- I did. I did. I did love that the fact they bring up it is like um, they just brought in a really hairy dude and he thought he was a vampire or, or they thought he was a werewolf or something. It's really offended. Yeah, I don't know if that was Brian Posehn or not. It sounded like him. I don't. So I don't not know. Not a werewolf. Mm. I love Brian Posehn. <laughs> Brian Posehn's great. I wish we could get him on here, but he's he's too high tier for us. He would be cool because he's like nerd to the extreme. He fucking wrote the Deadpool comics when it Hell came yeah, back. He did, he did a um, really good run on that too. I have not read it. I should probably do that. I did because um, I like comics. Oh, well. <laughs> We're we're not getting another uh, one of these Hotel Transylvania movies for a couple more years, I think. But I think next year we're getting an animated TV show. That works, I guess. Which the art style looks kind of adorable. Well, the the DreamWorks stuff kind of looks great in the Netflix department. So this, I'm hoping, uh, will look okay. Have you seen Home? <laughs> okay. Yeah, they really tried the Adventure <laughs> home, Time home, and, and Star home Versus. Home looks like it... Yeah, home look, the, the home animated series looks like it tried to copy Star vs. the Force of Evil's art style, but doing a really shitty Flash. Apparently, Thwarp Van Orman is, like, headlining that, so... People oh, are weird. saying it's good, but then again, I don't know if they're just sucking them off. I didn't want to watch the movie to begin with, um... And the, the the Croods show that they did is really weird because some episodes seem like they're traditionally animated and some of them seem like they're animated in Flash because I guess they use, like, two different studios. What the fuck? I don't know. It's weird. But um, I guess the the Hotel Transylvania show is going to, like, focus on, like, Teenage Mavis and, like, I'm, I'm I don't know, kids. But yeah, that pisses me off because they're like, oh, it's, it's Mavis as a teenager. And then everybody has kids, but they weren't in the movie. And it's like, what the fuck? Well, who's the, well? Who's to say that those are their kids? I mean, it's a oh, that's the thing. Like, it's a I mean, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Maybe it's obvious. Well, kids. maybe. Well, uh, Mavis ages differently than everybody, so maybe when she's like, you know, turning whatever their equivalent of eighteen is, like everyone's else is like fucking grown up past her because they age in a normal process. Maybe Frankenstein kid and the mummy's kid are off at Monster University. In DreamWorks uh, world, and we're all that's that's in Pixar world, but oh yeah, what the fuck <laughs> am I thinking? I don't know, man. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll see. Um, yeah. I don't know the the one the one teaser image they showed has a kind of a adorable art style, so oh I'll, I'll give it a chance when it comes out. It does look pretty sweet. Apparently, um, what is it? Peabody and Mr. Sherman's really good. A lot of people talk about that. I haven't seen the show yet. Um, it's hard. I haven't watched the movie either, so. It's hard for me to. I don't know. It's hard for me to take people seriously because they'll be like, oh, yeah, I worked on the show. It's really good. And it's really great to be passionate. I fucking really commend you for that. But to be passionate about something you worked on doesn't mean that it's automatically going to be good. Yeah, I don't know. It's really great to be that way, but that's why I'm like. I saw a lot of people were excited for home and I know it's an uniformed opinion, but looking at the trailer didn't look appealing at all to me. It looked like shit. Well, you, you don't like Jim Parsons. So. I don't like Jim Parsons, but I don't think they got Jim Parsons to do the voice for Holmes cartoon. That's what I'm saying. Oh no, no, probably not. Yeah. That's um, why I'm saying like, I know a lot of people who work in cartoons like that and they're like, yeah, it's really great. And it's like, no, it's not. Eh, well, not everything could be a home run, I guess. I'm not the target demographic. I get that. That's true. And that's what you have to tell yourself. Yeah. But I know when things are shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kyle, do you have anything final to say about both the hotel Transylvania movies. Yeah, if I could get through to one person, just one person through this podcast, stop supporting Adam Sandler's movies. <laughs> even I, even if it's the third movie, just don't see it. I haven't. I, I pirate it. I I will support this. I will support these movies 
because of Gendy and not because of Adam Sandler. I won't see Adam Sandler's other movies that he produces himself, but the fact that I will support these movies because if I support these movies, that means Gendy gets more opportunities to do other things. And I want that to be a thing. I want Gendy to get, you know, his own original ideas out there because I think he would make an amazing original movie. That's like saying if, that you drink poison water because you want to support the water, and you will drink the poison just. To <laughs> that get is a it. that is a brash over over generalization. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think the before we get into a fist fight, um, I think that about does it for our review I tonight. I want to get in a fist fight with my computer. <laughs> You'll just pent it up for the wedding and just punch me in the face. <laughs> That would be great. Does anybody have anything <laughs> to say? And I'll be like, I got some words. <laughs> and by words, I mean a fist. Yeah, we're going to throw down right now and then take off my tux. And we'll, we'll have a good redneck fight outside. <laughs> God. All right, guys. Well, thanks, everyone, for uh, listening to our review of both the Hotel Transylvania movies. Uh, you know what to do. Subscribe like all that good stuff leave us a comment tell us what you think of the movies uh if you're on camp kyle and hate it because it's adam sandler and if you're like me who wants to support good artists camp kyle rules (laughs) should make (laughs) t-shirts um and uh be sure to check back every week uh we do podcasts and reviews on animation every week or at least we try to (laughs) Um, life gets in the way yeah and like us on facebook and twitter where we post animation news and such frequently we're we're fun we're fun guys we're fun give, guys give us, give us a oh listen. yeah and and make sure you come back the next couple weeks because we're doing because this is the start of our our halloween biz bits we're reviewing uh i think we're gonna review yokai watch next week and then we have a special spooky treat episode for you for actual Halloween so be on the lookout for that episodes go out every Monday spooky usually usually yeah sounds about when I right. when we actually get our shit together they're supposed to they're supposed to come out on Monday <laughs> I'll give it that much yeah um but yeah so keep an eye out for all of our Halloween spookiness this month and then we'll have a big thing for November but Yay. We'll do all the wonderful Thanksgiving cartoons, because there's a lot of them. No, we had a thing we were going to do with Kyle. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. We'll figure it out. All right, everybody. Thanks again for listening, and we will catch you next week for another review. Yeah, what he said. Night, everybody. Night.